Hello friends, this is Uncle E and I am super excited to come to you today. I've been looking forward to this series uh, and for the next couple of weeks we're going to be going through uh, The Richest Man of Babylon. It's a book that I have uh, recommended to so many uh, people that are looking to, that are struggling with their finances, that are looking for ways to improve their, uh, you know, their, their, their financial uh, state of being and to grow their wealth. And so um, uh, the reason why I like this book is it is very relevant uh, for today. It talks about Babylon, which was the richest nation uh, of its time, which is very uh, similar or symbolic to the richest nation of this time, which is America. Um, it also uh, stand, it stood the test of time. It was written back in 1926 by George Clayson. And I encourage you to get this book, to track along with us as we go through um, just a, por a portion of this book called The Seven Cures for a Lean Purse. The Seven Cures for a Lean Purse. And so I'm going to kind of set the stage here today, kind of give a, a backdrop of where we are in this story and how we got to the seven cures. But I hope that you will track along with me over the next couple of weeks as we go through these cures. And hopefully it'll be uh, helpful for, to you, the principles itself, um, to, it, to, to give you the cures for a lean purse if that's where you find yourself at. So uh, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about Babylon. Again, it was the uh, richest nation of its time, very prosperous. Uh, the people uh, had become very wise, and that's how the um, the land became so prosperous. And it says that they have they first had to learn how to become wealthy. First had to learn how to become wealthy. And so um, that's how they grew to be the, because they learned how to become wealthy, they grew to be the richest nation uh, of its time. And it's very similar to America. Uh, we, we have grown to become the richest nation of its time, but there's been a disparity. Uh, there's been what we call a wealth transfer. And so uh, there was a king of Babylon, his name was Sargon. And he noticed, very similar to now uh, in America, that in his time that there was a wealth transfer. And so the king uh, made this statement, he said, or, 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 there was an assessment of his, of his town, and it said at this time that the laborers are without employment, the merchants have few customers, the farmers are unable to sell their produce, and the people have not enough gold to buy food. And so uh, the king wondered where all of the gold had gone uh, that he had spent on these improvements, these great improvements in the land. So the king Sargon, he had a, a chancellor, a counselor, uh, who responded and said, it has found its way into the possession of very few rich men of our city. It's filtered through the fingers of most of our people as quickly as a goat mil goat's milk goes through the strainer. Now that the stream of gold has ceased to flow, most of our people have nothing to show for their earnings. So the king was thoughtful for some time. Then he asked, why should so few men be able to acquire all the gold? Now, isn't that a question? Why should so few men be able to acquire all of the gold? And that's what we see here in America, the top 1% and then everybody else, right? And the chancellor said, because they know how. This was his response, because they know how. He said, one may not condemn a man for succeeding because he knows how, neither uh, may one with justice take away from a man that has fairly earned to give to men of less ability. So the king asked, but why? He said, why should not all of the people learn how to accumulate gold and therefore become themselves rich and prosperous? And the chancellor replied, quite possibly, your excellency, but who can teach them? And here was an interesting response. He asked, who can teach them? Then he said, certainly not the priest because they know not of money making. Now, of course, here in America, we know some priests that know how to make some money, but uh, generally speaking, they are good at what they do, and you need people that are good at this in order to, you know, good at being wealthy to, to teach people how to be wealthy. And so the king now and the chancellor are talking back and forth, and they're wondering, well, who can teach the people? And so they came up with a suggestion to call, a, call upon the richest man of Babylon, name of the book, and the man's name was Arkad. So they called Arkad and asked him if he would come and um, and teach the people. And so once Arkad came to the temple, came to the king's court, the king first asked him, how did you become so wealthy? And Arkad's response was by taking advantage of the opportunities available to all citizens of our good city. Now, don't we find that interesting that there are so many opportunities available to us in America? So many opportunities are available to everyone in the city. Now, of course, you'll have some people that will that play the wealth card or the race card or whatever the case may be. But lo and behold, there are opportunities, opportunities available to everyone. And then he asked, uh, then Arkad asked, I mean, the king asked Arkad, did you have anything to start with? And Arkad said, no, only a great desire for wealth. Besides that, nothing. And that's my question to you guys. 
Do you have a great desire for wealth? Because we know we, uh, what we see in our actions and most of our actions is a lot of debt. But do you have a great desire for wealth? Do you have a great desire for wealth that can be passed on for generation to generation? Do you have a great desire for generational wealth for your children your children's children? Do you have a great desire for wealth? And it's interesting that Arkad said that because that seems to be the starting point, having a desire to acquire wealth. Because if you don't have a desire, then learning about how to do it really makes no sense, right? And so uh, the king said to Arkad that his city was in a very unhappy state because a few men know how to acquire wealth and therefore monopolize it, while the mass of our citizens lack the knowledge of how to keep any part of the gold they receive. And then he asked Arkad, that, could it be taught? And Arkad said, it's practical, your majesty, that which one man knows can be taught to others. So uh, now, uh, you know, the king assembled, uh, called on the chosen 100 of the city to go to this temple and Arkad was going to come and then speak to these uh, men and try to give them some wisdom. And so I'm going to uh, give you his speech to them. And then it's going to flow. It's going to get us going into the next uh, you know, part or the next series as we get into actual the seven cures for a lean purse. So Arkad said to you, uh, said that his he, he started. He said, I started my fortune in the humblest of way. I had no advantage, not enjoyed as a fully as fully by you and every citizen in Babylon. The first storehouse of my treasure was well-worn purse. I loathed it. It's useless emptiness. I desired that it be round and full, clinking with the sound of gold. Therefore, I saw every remedy of a lean purse, and I found seven. To you, who are assembled before me, shall I explain the seven curses of a lean purse, which I do recommend to all men who desire much gold. Seven, not seven curses, seven cures. Each day, for seven days, I'll explain to you one of the seven remedies. Listen attentively to the knowledge that I will impart. Debate it with me. Discuss it among yourselves. Learn these lessons thoroughly that you may also plant in your own purse the seed of wealth. First, must each of you start wisely to build a fortune of his own. Then will thou be competent, and only then, to teach the truths to others. I shall teach you in the simplest ways how to fatten your purses or to grow your account. And this is the first step leading to the temple of wealth. And no man can climb who cannot plant his feet firmly upon the first step. We shall now consider the first cure. So uh, in the future videos, we're going to get into um, the seven cures. And I encourage you to get the book. Um, and I also encourage you to debate it with me, to question it, to ponder it, to take some of this wisdom. And hopefully it'll help you um, to grow or to give you to give you the knowledge that you need, arm you with the information that you need to grow your wallet. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I know it's a little bit long. Um, this is Uncle E. And... We'll be moving forward with the seven cures for a lean purse.